Hey, this is the video I wanted to create on how to set up mod auth OIDC for CentOS for Glue Server or for a Glue client. So I have a Glue Server running here on my CentOS computer and um, everything is configured. If I do an exit from the uh, Glue command line, I can run this command and see that uh, Glue, the Glue Server is running. This is a fresh installation of Glue Server with a AWS. EC2 instance running CentOS 6.5. So I just installed Glue Server, and um, in the prior videos I created, you could see how I installed that. But I'm going to go and set up the Glue client now. So I believe the Glue client is set up inside the same machine running the Glue Server, because if you check to see the status of the um, Apache or HTTP HTTPD server, you'll see that it's not running. But when you log into the Glue Server, you'll see it is running. So I believe they intend for you to install it on this Apache server uh, instance. So what I'll do is I'll go to the instructions here for the mod auth OIDC, this module that's built into Apache, and click on the CentOS instructions. And uh, here I'll look at the installation guide for setting up the mod auth OIDC. So the, <clears throat> sorry, the first thing we'll do is uh, they read the instructions, they say that um, set up Apache, they're assuming that all host names will be DNS resolvable. That is true for my machine when I access the Glue server. I can see the um, path that I have to this server is correct. It does work. So if you'd like to test that, you could ping this IP address or this d DNS entry, but it should work. I guess I'll do that just to show for as an example here. Uh, actually, this protocol is probably turned off. Uh, ICMP is probably turned off on the server for Amazon EC2, so that's not a good example, but it is resolvable right now. So um, uh, I guess the, the better way to do this is NS lookup and pasting in that address, and then it'll show the information for your server. So back to the Glue client setup. We'll go to the instructions, and here we'll run the following command to add the Apple repo, so we can pull down that Apache module. And it's already installed, so that's good. Now we'll set, set up Apache 2. So we need to install mod SSL, or the HTTPD the HTTP daemon and mod SSL, the SSL module for Apache. Okay, so it's going to update these two modules. So we'll type yes or Y and let it update those modules. And then we need to go and grab these two, these three things, install these with yum. So we'll be installing those things. It's going to update curl and then install higher dais and jans and all right, this looks good. So I'm hoping this works because it hasn't worked in the past. This video will really be more of a documentation of the problem if it doesn't work for me this time. But now we'll run this RPM. And that's complete. So We'll run yum upgrade just to make sure there's nothing that needs to be upgraded. So there are a few things that need to be upgraded, so I'll let those update while I'm in the background um, checking a few other instructions. So what I guess they want us to do is check to see that this file is available. That, that confirms the presence of the module. And um, with that module, we can configure, I think it's really short for open ID, um, client, the OpenID client module, so that we can configure Apache to check the status of the user that we're trying to check for uh, the presence of, to see if they're logged in or not already. And if not, then we'll redirect them to the server they're going to log in at. So later on we'll be configuring that as part of the registration, but we need to set up a page. So um, we'll check to see the presence of the module, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we will create an Apache comp file for loading that module using this command. Then we'll start the HTTPD daemon 
what I may do is restart it since it's already running. And then the Apache module should be using port 44443. And then we'll use the dynamic client registration and see if that works for us. So we'll create a folder a directory called dynamic and we'll also later create a directory called metadata and then we'll put this file index.html inside of the dynamic folder and we will change the permissions for everything in the HTML folder so that everything is owned by Apache and then Apache can check those files only and uh, apply all the changes and the, the rules for accessing that folder. So here are the here are the rules descriptions for accessing that folder. <coughs> Excuse me. It's um, listed as a virtual host and it's monitoring this port and the server name is dynamic.glue.org. So my understanding is that I'll need to change this to be the host name of my glue server. And then these instructions will show the metadata directory, the client secret, uh, where do you redirect users, and uh, all the other necessary information for configuring the client. So now that we've finished running the update command, we just finished running, um, I'm sorry, yum upgrade. That's what we ran last. So now we'll confirm the presence of the module. So we see the module is there. And uh, although the, the date says May 17th, and it's not May 17th, it's October 9th, but that's all right. So next we will uh, cat this text into this file name to create the file. But what I'll do instead is just navigate to this folder and then um, put this into the file. So that way these quotes don't cause a problem with the terminal. So I'll cd to that folder and I can see there are some other comp files there already. And this is the name of the folder, the file we want to create. So I'll run the touch command and the name of the file and create the file. And then if I run vi, I can open this file. And I can paste in the text that needs to be in that file to load that module. Put vi in insert mode by pressing i and then paste in the text. Hit escape, semicolon, w and q for write and quit. And then we have the contents of that file correct now. So now we have to start the HTTPD daemon, the Apache daemon, or the uh, HTTP daemon, which is the Apache application. So what I'll do is restart instead of start. So this module should be using port 44443. So now we need to dynamically register the client. We'll use dynamic client registration, which is the first sets of, set of instructions here. So um, it says for dynamic client registration, we'll name the server dynamic.glue.org. Um, my server has a different name, so I'm gonna try that different name instead. So we'll go to this path and create the folder dynamic, which I've already done. You'll see a dynamic folder there and a metadata folder. So what I'll do is go into that folder into that folder and create this file index.html. So now I can see that file. Paste in the context. So it looks like we should only see this if we're authenticated, because this is a protected URL. Alright, so that file is correct now. So the next thing we need to do is create another directory called metadata. We can already have that directory created. And then change the ownership of the directory using this command. So this has the change ownership recursive command. The flag is recursive. Uh, make the ownership Apache colon Apache. I believe it's Apache user and the Apache group, and then this directory. So now if I uh, look at things in this directory, it's owned by Apache and the user Apache, the group and user. 
And if we look at HTML, the same thing applies. So now we need to create the Apache config file now. So it says create a file named um, dynamic.conf inside this folder. So as usual, I'll go into this folder. And I see the modules. And then just create a file dynamic.conf. And there's our file dynamic.conf. And then we need to take the contents here in the tutorial and paste it in and then edit the file appropriately. So here I believe we need to change the server name to be the name of the server that I already set up. So I'll use this as an example as an opportunity to go grab the name of the server, the host name of the server. This is actually the like, fully qualified DNS name, but um, I'm going to use this since this is what I named the server. And hopefully I'll have success with this. This problem, this part normally causes a, a problem for me. The redirect URL, dynamic.glue.org, and then the port slash dynamic fake underscore redirect URI. So what I'll do is I will change this so that way um, instead of dynamic.glue.org, we'll use um, the name of the server. So now I'll leave these things the same. Escape, write, and quit. And then back to our tutorial instructions. So here they're just saying they're using the same keys that are on the server, which is this file and this file. Now we'll restart the Apache service. Okay, Apache is restarted. Now we'll try to access this page. They use dynamic.glue.org colon port slash dynamic. So hopefully this works. If not, then um, it may not work very well for me, but we'll give it a try. We'll use the proper host name that can be resolved from where I'm accessing the server. Host name and then the port 44443 slash dynamic. Now uh, in the tutorial they used dynamic.glue.org so they used a, uh, a subdomain and this subdomain um, should be resolvable but I don't have it set up so I can resolve subdomains so I'm just using the fully qualified DNS entry colon the port number so I can access the server of this port and this folder so I can try to get to that index.html file which it should try to access and then hopefully the rules in the module redirect me to the server that I need to log into in order to see that file. So what I'll do here is log out just so I don't have a session and close that window. And then uh, what I'll also do is on the server, I will go to the log folder for Apache and I'll see I have two logs here so I will tail this access underscore log file tail dash f is for follow and then access underscore log so I can hopefully see when I try to access this server so now I'll give it a chance and this is not working. I get connection refused. It says check your internet connection. It's saying you might be using a proxy that causes this problem, but um, I cannot access this server on this port right now. And I didn't see any activity change here. So I'll display the error log. And um, I think this, this log entry and the server is perhaps new, so I'll try it again, just in case there's a change. And 
and there's no change in the log file. Connection refused. So it looks like the connection is making it all the way to the server, but the connection is refused. And I'm trying to use HTTPS to access the server at port 44443 and the dynamic uh, directory on that server. So that's not working for me. So this is the part that I've had a problem with and um, hopefully I can find a workaround for this. If I do, I'll post another video shortly after.